So in the green channel of this texture, I have this cool, like, uh, glowing effect that I want to add. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this adder. And uh, let's see here. I'm going to move all of this over here. And uh, I'm going to take the output of this and add it with the green channel. And uh, you'll notice that once I do that, I get this cool, like, glowing effect. It's actually really subtle. It's very hard to see. So I'm going to do some manipulation in the material editor to make it stand out a little bit. And what I'm going to do that is I'm going to math uh, multiply. I'm going to add a new multiply. And I'm going to multiply the green channel by a constant. And this constant it's basically the amount that I want to multiply it by. So if I say 5, it pops out a little bit more. Um, hold on, I need to close this. There we go. So by changing this amount, that's the value of 2, 3, 4, 5. I think I'll leave it at about maybe 1.5. Uh, we can make it stand out a little bit more. Now, I also want to make this guy rotate. So I'm going to copy this rotator and uh, do that. So now that piece is moving a little bit. Let me uh, move it at a point, negative point seven. That's too much, maybe. And like I said, I want this to be kind of a subtle effect. So uh, yeah, that looks about right. So I want to make one part um, in this texture a little bit less opaque, and it's actually the blue channel. I want to make it um, really, really, really subtle. So I'm actually going to use the same method. I'm going to take a multiply. Let's move all this stuff out of the way. Uh, so math, multiply. And I'm going to move these guys back a little bit. And I'm going to multiply this with another constant. And I'm going to link that over here. Now this constant is set to zero, so you're not seeing anything. If I put it to 0.15, now you see that same um, blocky texture, but it's uh, basically 15% of what it was originally. It was at uh, 1, and now it's at 0.5. Maybe I'll leave it at uh, 0.05. Yeah, just keep it very subtle. Yeah, I like that. Okay. Okay, so I made some changes, uh, cut, you know, uh, basically, you know, by adding some more adders and multipliers, I've kind of put all of my textures together, animated them a little bit differently, and got pretty much the movement that I wanted, minus, you know, some tweaking, and, and of course, color. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to go ahead and add some color. So in the very last step, I'm adding a multiply here. Uh, right after, basically between my final add and uh, the emissive node, I'm going to add a multiply and I'm going to go to parameters and add a new vector parameter. Uh, and this vector parameter I'm going to call color under parameter name. And uh, this is going to allow me to colorize um, the effect um, dynamically, like in code if I wanted to. And I'm going to go ahead and add the RGB node to the add node and we're going to link this into the emissive component. Now it's important that I, in my parameter, give it an initial value in the RGB of 1, 1, 1 so that I can see it. Uh, and this is what we had before. Now let's say that we want to colorize it blue. I'll just, uh, I can do one of two things actually. I could add a higher value um, in that parameter and that will colorize it blue. Or, uh, going back to what I had originally, I can lower the values of the other one. So um, by taking away red and green, I've essentially added blue. So it's the same thing. Uh, you can get different effects uh, and different um, manipulations. Um, so yeah, let's say I want a little bit more blue. There we go. All right, so that's an, that's an interesting coloration. Um, it's probably not what I'll go for the final version, but just shows you how you can uh, multiply a color. You can also use, if you're not going to manipulate it in code, and if it's going to stay this color, you can uh, add a new constant 3 vector. Uh, and that, you know, will basically do the same thing um, by changing the RGB values. I don't know what I had, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and 2. So um, pick your poison, it's the same thing. Um, 
And uh, another another important thing that you want to do actually, uh, and this is um, for a lot of visual effect, you know, particle effect work, is you also want to uh, multiply uh, in the last stage your effect by what's called a, um, a vertex color um, and node. And what that does is it allows you and the can cascade the visual effects editor on code to dynamically um, uh, manipulate the color um, that way. So um, you won't see anything in here, but it's an important step um, in, uh, to take in cascades so because you can you can change the color over life, the uh, the opacity over life, and uh, those options won't uh, properly render unless you you take this step in the material. So and what I did there is I through the alpha uh, and the opacity of this material so that uh, you can change the opacity to uh, by life. All right, so we notice that it looks a little different again. Um, what I've actually gone and done is I've added vector parameters for every component that I want to change uh, the color of independently. And this is going to be important because we're going to actually create material instances of these and be able to uh, use this material as sort of a parent material and um, the parameter names that we apply to each uh, individual color changer uh, will show up in the material instance editor and we'll be able to change those uh, independently. So uh, you notice that I have inner font color and that one will change uh, the color of the uh, inner font that I have so like uh, these guys right here. So yeah, great. I mean, we're, we'll consider this uh, material for now done. Uh, and yeah, creating materials is a very iterative process. You know, it's a lot of uh, this looks good, this looks good, let's tweak this kind of stuff. So um, it usually takes time. So yeah, now what we're going to do is we're going to create a new material instance constant. And I'm going to call this rings underscore blue underscore MIC for material instance constant. And that pops up. And uh, we'll go ahead and open that. and. Um, what I'm going to do is actually uh, select rings underscore mat and under the parent in the in the MIC editor I will go ahead and add the reference to the material that we just created. So there you go. There's our material and let's give it a better preview. There we go. So if you go under vector parameter values you'll notice all of the vector parameters that we added and uh, the cool thing about an MIC is we can create as many instances as we want of the material that we just created and we can modify all of the color settings uh, that we just created because we made that available to us in the, in the MIC editor. So uh, this has all the default values that I'll go ahead and change. Uh, actually this is the blue one and that's these are the colors that I want for the blue one. I'll go ahead and make a duplicate of this and I will call it rings underscore yellow uh, MIC and this one we're going to go ahead and give it a kind of generic uh, yellow colorization so yeah I just uh, tweaked the values of this MIC uh, and I was able to create a uh, kind of a yellow orangey hue for this one and you can do this uh, arbitrarily as many times as you want I uh, highly recommend creating MICs when possible versus creating a uh, whole new material because it's just a lot easier and uh, I mean there's no reason why why you shouldn't. In fact I think when you uh, when you want to create decals it's actually um, necessary to create instances. Um, the game will actually do this for you automatically uh, in some cases so yeah. Okay, so now that we have our uh, material and um, material instances created, we're going to go ahead and just throw it in game real quick. And uh, just open up a quick little test map. Um, and we'll go ahead and open the content browser. Um, I've made another uh, version of the MIC here. So we're going to select it. We're going to minimize the browser. And uh, we're going to right click anywhere in our map. And we're going to add actor, and um, one of the options is add decal. So we go ahead and do that, and we'll notice that the decal is now being rendered right here. Uh, it's a projection. Um, that's the cool thing about decals is that it's projected down. So anywhere that this um, geometry is 
cl uh, clipping with that it'll, it'll be rendered and if we hit F4 and go to the properties of this decal material we can go to decal actor base and um, if we expand decal uh, we can modify the width and the height um, so if I wanted a thousand uh, by a thousand and there we go so there's our cool futuristic decal in world um, being projected on our world geometry so yeah I hope that helps um, that's pretty much all there is for this tutorial please feel free to email me and uh, add me on Twitter thanks a lot